Good evening. I'm Jeff Koinange, and this is Jeff Koinange live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski. And if it's Wednesday, you know it's all about politics 101. What a week it's been. Since last Friday, news has been hitting newsrooms thick and fast. And we want to digest and investigate and talk about the issues surrounding the stories making the headlines this past week. On the bench today, literally, hot off the press, if you will. He landed in town last night. He's on the bench today. Every time he's in town, you know you want to listen to him. We've got him on. Why? Well, he's critic number one of the Jubilee administration, if you will, because he calls it. Without fear or favor, he just calls it. And he does, despite what many people think he continues to call it he has a column every sunday in the sunday standard he's right now based in washington dc working for the bank he is a distinguished professor from the suny state university of new york in buffalo new york a real professor he insists wow it's gonna be a smoking show if you will Sit back, folks. His Twitter handle at Macau Mutua. Mine is at Queen Anger Jeff. The hashtag we're using tonight, let's try this. Let's just say Macau Mutua and see your reactions. That's the hashtag tonight, Macau Mutua. My guest for the next 60 minutes. Prof? I, I see that you put a target on my back. <laughs> uh, my, my What's the target? Hashtag Macau Matua. That's, a that's it. That's it. We want to see if people are responding oh, to the oh, show. Oh, all right. All right. By the way, before we go on, I'd like to give a shout out to some friends I, I spent the day with today in a place called Enes Shapai. Do you know it? I know it. I've been there. I've been there before. Have you been there? Excellent facility. Beautiful place. Beautiful. Yeah. Ser serene and calm. Serene and calm is the word. My friends from CFC Stanvik, I hope you're watching. Oh my! Somebody say oh my! Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> Prof, good to see you. Good to see you too. Look, there's been a lot of news as always and every time you come in there's even more news it's like people know you're coming but last friday in uh last friday night i, I think it was or thursday night uh an ardent critic of the government's not not quite unlike yourself jacob juma gunned down while driving home allegedly and uh, of course there's been a whole bunch of theories about who killed it, who done it if you will yes it's like an agatha christie novel yes who done it yeah so first of all i want to massage two facts that are out there in the in the air go on one of them is that uh, i saw that in, in the promotional tweet for my appearance before your, tonight, sh yeah. your show tonight you refer to me as a court guest <laughs> i didn't say you were a court guest professor i said issues iebc jacob juma cord and then i said guest there should have been a, a comma after cord there was not oh, oh so now you're an english professor no 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 i'm just correcting you but uh, okay. the point is this the point is that i am not a member of any political party in kenya you're not corded i don't even know what that means but i'm not a court a member of cord uh, my view of kenyan political parties is that i am at best ambivalent and agnostic at worst, I am very troubled by them because they don't represent ideas, they don't represent, you know, agendas for change and reform. Many of them are just pivoting around individuals, you know, and so I just want to make sure that the public knows that. The second thing that I want to say is you refer to me as a critic of Jubilee. You are. I just want, again, want to massage that fact. Go on. Massage it Go a little on. bit. Uh, Put some new ones onto it, and uh, I, I am a social critic. I I I, I look at facts uh, as they are in society, and I and I, I write about those facts from different angles. It could be about women's issues. It could be about um, you know gay rights, which I've spoken about before and written about. It could be about, uh, in fact, jubilee. So I don't know why you would pick any one of any 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 one of those particular things I write about and brand me with one of them as opposed to just calling me a social critic i'll tell you why why you refuse to refer to the president of the republic of kenya by his given title but don't you see how that fact 
that you've just stated, uh, how troubling it is to, to you and to, um, I think, many... Troubling? Troubling in the Jubilee Coalition. The point I've tried to make about all of this is that I've said it is not about Mr. Kenyatta. I've been very clear about that. I think he's cool. I think he's hip, in fact. He's a hip guy. You know, uh, and, you know, what is a fact is that uh, he was recognized as president by the IABC and by the Supreme Court. So individual citizens have the freedom, I hope, of conscience to decide what they want to think. The fact that this one issue has troubled people so much, mm -hmm. including the great Jeff Koinange, <laughs> Peabody, yes. Peabody winning journalist, yeah. you know, former CNN global reporter. Yeah. I mean, you are the best in the business, man. There's Thank no you. one there's no one like you. I appreciate that. But the fact, let me finish, but just the fact that, that this issue is so troubling to you shows the power of an individual citizen. But let me ask you this, Prof. Yes. What would make you refer to President Kenyatta as President Kenyatta? What is it? Other than IBC and Supreme Court, what is it you want? Well, I mean, uh, so, so, so we've talked about this before. And, uh, you know, Kenyans and the world know that this country has many problems. Yeah. It has also great promises. We also know this. It's a fact. It's a great place. We all love it. And I think a lot of people love it. But let's not kid ourselves. There are issues in this country. You know, corruption among them is a key problem. Insecurity is another problem. What I've said before is that Mr. Kenyatta can address these issues and address them seriously without batting an eyelid or without winking at individuals close to him who he knows are culpable, are liable for these problems, yeah. you know. So I, I just want him to act and play the role to which he was elected. And, you know, I'll be the first to say kudos. Mr. President. Yes, I'll be the first to say you that. You will say that? Yes, after he does all these things, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to, to do it. I have no personal issue with the man. Like I said, I think he's cool, I think he's hip. But let me come to the issue of Mr. Juma mm -hmm. that, that you had raised. Yes. Um, you know, so first of all, my heart, um, uh, goes out to his family and to his friends. Uh, you know, it's, it is, was a murder most foul. Mm. I think anyone who has looked at the facts knows that this was an assassination. I know there are theories out there floating in the blogosphere and also in the newspapers. I read uh, Masharia Gaido's uh, wonderful mm. piece in the, in, the, in the Daily Nation the other mm. day. By the way, great journalist. Much, Absolutely. Much sure Absolutely. But what I, what, what I think we have to think about is dispense with the fact that the man was murdered, assassinated, killed, robbed out, as they say, mm -hmm. in mafia country, mm -hmm. robbed out. Yep. The question is who had the means, who had the opportunity, uh, and, and, and who had the motive to do it, okay? Uh, the way the killing was done, to me, appears to be very professional, okay? So it, it must be individuals who are trained to do contract killings. Now, which people are those? Or groups are those? It could be the state. I'm not saying it is a state, mm -hmm. but I'm saying one theory is that it could be the state. It could also be the deep state. That's right. The deep state is different from the state. Mm -hmm. The deep state are the people who pull the levers That's right. behind the scenes. And the cartels that I think uh, the Chief Justice William Mutunga was talking about that run our country and our economy. But it could also be business people who were unhappy with him. You know? Yeah. Uh, but in any case, it was a carefully planned um, you know, killing. The problem with trying to unravel uh, who did it, who done it, as you put it, mm -hmm. uh, is that Kenyans don't trust the investigating authorities. They don't trust the police. They don't trust, um, uh, you know, the secret services to, to be able to give us all the information. When they come and they say, well, they found two cartridges on the scene. Well, no one is going to believe that because people may think, oh, well, they planted that evidence. 
uh, at the scene of the crime. Other people have said he was not killed there. He was killed somewhere else and then moved there. Mm. Don't forget the history of assassinations in Kenya is a terrible one. And on a previous show, we talked about this. I talked about, you know, political killings or assassinations going all the way back to Pio Gama Pinto, to Mboya, to Oko, to Alexander Mugo, to, 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 to all these people who yeah. have been killed. So I just want to, to say to you that, uh, that this is, is, is going to be a riddle that perhaps we will never, will never be solved because we have never solved you know, the other murders. What makes this murder very interesting and dicey for the current administration uh, of Mr. Kenyatta and Mr. Ruto is that uh, Mr. Juma had named some individuals, I think among them very senior people in government, as planning to kill him. The second thing, obviously, is out there in the public, is that he was a vociferous um, uh, uh, investigator, if you will, whistleblower on, on Eurobond. This is a fact. Mm. You know, so Kenyans are left wondering, was he killed uh, because people want to silence him? Was he killed because, because of a business deal gone bad? Why was he killed? But I just have to say that it is a terrible thing because a government, a republic like Kenya, the basic functions of statehood are number one, to protect the lives of citizens, and number two, to protect their property. Tell me something, Prop. Is someone like you worried? Because you're, you, you're a critic. You speak your mind without fear or favor. You say what's on, you know, what you say what you feel. Do, do, you, get, do you get worried? I, I have to say that uh, personally I'm not worried, you know, because I've not lived my life under the cloud of fear. You know, whether it was in the current regime, the Kibaki regime, and now the Kenyatta regime. I've always spoken my mind. You know, I'll look people in the face, people look them in the eye and tell them what I think. So I'm not worried. But I think what the, this killing does is it chills uh, the political space. Uh, and it, it dampens the country and it makes people walk with fear mm. looking over their shoulder mm. if they are critics thinking could I be next yeah I had a conversation with uh, uh, one of the most well-known bloggers in Kenya Robert Ali the other day yes and he he, uh, he commented uh, you know he, he's very worried because he's he's a critic he's he's outspoken and people like him have been forced to reevaluate themselves and, and and their positions yes yeah I, I just want to tell them the people who are outspoken and dissenters and critics that they are essential for democracy that democracy cannot exist where people do not differ that change and progress comes from divergent views mm. that in fact i would tell the jubilee uh, government that uh, people like uh, robert Ali and others are a blessing to the country mm. uh, because they they push the other side or the side opposite and they create this 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 dialogue dialogic uh, diametrical dialogue uh, between the state and those who are outside the state and I, I simply want to say that no they, they should not really be afraid and and I think that is giving the impression that that you can be a coward yeah you know you know the, the, the question I think that all of us have to grapple with uh, Jeff uh, is that shall we live by our conscience or shall we auction our conscience to those who, who would intimidate us? And I think history has shown every time that if you stand up the bully, if you refuse to be silenced, if you refuse to be cowed, that good things happen to those societies. The most advanced societies are those societies that have dissenters. Mm. I will tell the Jubilee government today, if they are watching me, and I'm sure they are, they are. because they always watch me when I'm on, <laughs> Uh, that, f frankly, they should let people ventilate their views mm. as openly as possible. Yeah. It's only when you start to sit on people's views and to silence people that the whole thing blows, blows yeah. up. Someone who ventilates his views a lot, uh, Prof, is uh, a gentleman you know very well. He has the same name twice. Yes. Miguna Miguna. Yes. Recently declared that he's running for governor of Nairobi ca yes. County. Yes. 
Well, I think hair will pre freeze over first before Mr. Maguna becomes governor of uh, even a village. You did not say that? No, 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 I just did. Because uh, I, I, I think that you, people must live in reality. Mr. Maguna seems to live in a parallel universe, whereby he, the facts that he lives by are his facts alone and no one else's. Uh, in, in fact, I think he lives in a fact-free zone. <laughs> But, <laughs> uh, you know, I think it is in a fact free zone. But maybe... Under, may under what climate, in which country, under what dispensation would Mr. Meguna become the governor of Nairobi, let alone the governor of Nyamira? <laughs> <laughs> Prof, you didn't say that. Maybe no. Nairobi needs that kind of change. Maybe Kenya needs that kind of leader. We have no evidence that Mr. Meguna has any political skills. I I'll tell you something. Mr. Meguna appears to be a good analyst you know, of, of, of uh, the society. He is outspoken. He has fought for change in this country. Uh, he had a tiff with the former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, as you know very well. He's a hard-working man. I have no problem with those issues. Yeah. And I respect him for those issues. But a politician, he is not. You said the same thing about one Donald Trump in America, Prof. The last time you were here, yes. you said there's no way in hell yes. that man would ever become president. Look at him now. He's not president yet. But he's sitting on the Republican ticket. Yeah. I have to say this here, uh, that uh, strange things have happened in life. <laughs> you know, yes. you know, and uh, I don't, you know, I don't pretend to always uh, be correct uh, in my analysis. Uh, no social analyst or political analyst is. You know, we get things wrong. That's a fact of life. Mm. But I'll just say this here. What I said to you when I was here last, and I hope you will not hang me with it, <laughs> because you always keep on hanging in with, with <laughs> things that I said before. Yes. It's, it's that Mr. Trump is singularly unfit mm. to be president of the United States. The man is a bumbling idiot. He is incoherent. Mm. He has no idea about foreign policy. Uh, he could not point, point out China on the map if you show him a global, global map. Mm. He is a xenophobe. He is a racist. He is a sexist. He is all those horrible things that, that, that uh, we've talked about. His own rhetoric conjures up the worst moments uh, in history. You know, when, I, when he talks, I think of the Nazis, quite mm. frankly. Mm. You know, so I shudder to think that a person like that could ever be elected president of the most powerful country on earth. Right now, he has basically inserted his way to the nomination. Yeah. He has dispatched every opponent. The reason why this happened is simple is that the established establishment is tired. They have no new ideas. Mm. And he came in and offered uh, Kool-Aid to people who are disaffected, to people who want change. But it is also to a particular demographic. And I just want to say that his base of support is among disaffected white males. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a fact. Who fear Hillary. Well, they don't just fear Hillary. I mean, they fear that, that they are losing America. To, that America is browning mm. and, and becoming more black, and, mm. and is you know so they fear those things. They fear displacement. This is a fact. But the country is changing. I, I think we are thinking that uh, in another 20 years, America will be a majority minority, yeah. uh, you know, country. So they better live with it. But 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 uh, Trump, uh, the Trump presidency is not a done deal. Let me put it that way. Number one. He still has to be nominated at the convention in Cleveland mm -hmm. in July. Mm -hmm. And then he has to face Hillary in that election. What I will say to you is that right now it looks as though it's a possibility that could be elected. But it is not a probability. <laughs> okay? And the difference is huge. Yeah. The, you know, the difference is that you might look at it. The other, the, other, the, other, the, other, the other probability is you might actually snatch it. But even if he was to snatch it, let me just make it clear that the U.S. presidency, as I told you before, is a straight jacket. Our brother from another mother, mm -hmm. the, great, the great Barack Obama, yep. found out when he got to the White House that that office was, uh, you know, a straight jacket. You get into it, and there are things you can do, and there are things you cannot do. No matter who you are. No matter who you are. So people shouldn't be too concerned about Trump. Because even if he's elected, he will be uh, cut down to size and contained by uh, uh, the, the structure yeah. of the state. Yeah. You're going to live in an America with President Donald Trump? I, well, I li was living there during George Bush. It's true. And that was not very good either. True. True. Yes. All right. Before we go to break, real quick. Yeah. Uh, so, 
Are you a real professor as opposed to Mutahi Nguni, uh, professor? I mean, w w what's that deal about? Well, first of all, um, let me just say I don't, this is a topic that uh, I hoped you would not raise uh, because it does not warm the cockles of my heart. <laughs> the reason why it doesn't warm the cockles of my heart is because I, I, I'm very disappointed when respectable individuals in our society claim titles or distinctions, academic distinctions or titles that they never earned or were never confirmed. So you don't think he earned a professorship? I, I, I don't think that there has been any living human being who has been able to uh, find any evidence or any iota of evidence that uh, Mr. Mutai Nguni, and I call him Mr., not Doctor, ever earned a PhD, number one, and number two, whether, whether any university, you know, even if it's uh, a third-rate university somewhere, uh, has ever conferred on him the title of professor. That, that is something you earn after many, many years of uh, rigorous work. Mr. Kagwanja, Dr. Kagwanja now, he has a PhD uh -huh. from University of Champaign, Urbana. Um, and I know that university, actually I went to high school just outside Urbana, Champaign uh -huh. in the 70s. Uh, it's a great university. So he has a PhD there. He's a good researcher. There's no question about it. I respect that. Uh, he's written some interesting stuff. Mm. But a professor he is not. No one, no university has ever conferred on, on Dr. Kagwanja the title of professor. I wrote to uh, Dr. Maria Nzomo, Professor Maria Nzomo, who heads the diplomacy school at the University of Nairobi, asking her to confirm if uh, Dr. Kagwanja was a professor there. She never responded to me, and I concluded that she did not, did not want to embarrass him. I also went to the website and searched for his name. It, it, it didn't come up. On, on, on the school's website. So you're the only sitting professor in the house? Well, no, no, I'm not. There are many professors, but the, those, those two are not professors. <laughs> okay, on that break, on that note, we're going to take a break, prof. <laughs> prof. When we come back, let's talk about uh, CORD and the IABC. Yes. What yes. is going on, prof? I mean, what is this? People are exercising, exercising their democratic rights. What do you mean what's going on? You are talking as though you don't live in this country, Jeff. I'm just saying, can't we all just get along like but Rodney King said? Are they not trying to get along? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about break. it when we come back. Don't go away. Do not go away. <laughs> Don't touch that button. No. <laughs> <laughs> Keep tweeting at Macau Mutua, at Konanga Jeff's hashtag. At Macau Mutua. Ma at Macau Mutua. No, no, no. Hashtag is... Yeah. Macau Mutua. At Macau Mutua, right. Hashtag is Macau Mutua. Let's see who's talking out there. And like the prof said... Do not even think touching that dial. Don't do it. Jeff Kunaga live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.